I'm going to go ahead and put a number five blade in here, and I've intentionally picked a fairly small uh, plain end blade to show you one of the difficulties of most entry level saws, and that's actually getting the, play, the blade chucked up in the lower chuck. So I'm going to show you how uh, the problems with most of these saws and uh, with practice how you can get much better at doing it. When you go ahead and feed your blade down from the top, and hopefully you'll be able to see this, go ahead and put the blade down as far as it'll go into this little channel. Now this is the set screw that we're going to use to tighten the blade. And what you'll see as I turn this set screw, the whole chuck wants to move forward from the torque of the thing and it has a tendency to want to pull these small blades out where you're trying to tighten them down. So the thing to do is get it in there to where you've just got it slightly snug and then work a finger in around to the front and hold that chuck tight while you go ahead and apply the extra pressure to that set screw. Okay? Now we've got the bottom chucked up, we'll go up to the top and we'll uh, chuck it up on the top also. I'm back up on top of the saw table now, I'm going to go ahead and, and insert the blade into the top chuck. I've got my tool into the set screw, I'm going to push down on the top arm with this finger, I'm going to go ahead and move the blade back in between the two set screws, and then just go ahead and tighten it down. Now again, the chuck wants to pivot on you, you know, as you tighten this down, so you want to put a a thumb right there so you can get some pretty good pressure on it. And there we have the blade chucked up with no tension on it. Now what we want to do is come back and I, you can't see this but I'm reaching back to my tensioning knob in the back of the saw and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Right about there. That sounds pretty good. So now what we can do is go ahead and turn the saw on and listen for any rattling to see if we've got the tension too tight or maybe too loose. And I came off the tension just a little bit, and I think we'll run it right about at that speed at that tension. While we're on the top of the table, I want to show you one thing that is another uh, problem with some scroll saws, not necessarily entry level, but a uh, few saws have this problem. And that is that the hole that you uh, feed the blade through is pretty large on this table, and it has to be uh, to be able to tilt the table. Uh, when you go to tilt the table to the left, you'll see the blade will actually pivot up into this hole, so it has to be kind of big. But most of the time you're going to be cutting on a flat table. Uh, so what you can do, and I'll show you this in a little bit, is you can make a zero insert for this blade to cover up most of this hole. And I'll show you that uh, after we get into it a little bit. I'm ready to cut the first project on this saw right now. And before I do, I want to show you one of the first upgrades that I would do to this saw uh, if it were mine. And that is a foot switch. I really enjoy having a foot switch. It keeps your hands free to start and stop the saw and uh, gives you much more control over your project. So this particular foot switch is what they call a dead man switch or a temporary switch. And basically as you apply your foot to it, the saw starts. When you lift your foot, the, the saw stops. So simple as you plug the saw into the foot switch, then you plug the foot switch into your outlet and you're ready to go. So I've got that accessory hooked up and then we'll go ahead and start cutting this first project. Okay, here's a pretty typical uh, beginner scroll saw pattern, and it's just a simple Christmas ornament, ornament and I've got the uh, pattern uh, applied to a piece of one quarter inch walnut, and i uh, got a few entry holes here we need to cut, so it'll give us an idea of just how much trouble uh, the tool uh, is to uh, put the blade through the entry holes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and take the tool, release my tension back here in the back again. I'm going to release the the blade from the top chuck. Go ahead and pick my first entry hole. Doesn't matter where we start, but you generally want to start on one of the interior entry holes. I'm going to go ahead and put the piece down on the table and go ahead and tighten up the front or the top blade holder. And reapply my tension. That's pretty good. We'll go ahead and set our uh, uh, air blower here to remove the sawdust and we can begin cutting. I'm going to go ahead and turn on a fan here because it's getting pretty hot in here, so excuse the noise here. Now, another thing this saw doesn't have that would be real handy is a light. Uh, this saw doesn't come with a, a light to watch, so you might want to go ahead and purchase yourself another light. I've got the speed turned up probably, oh, 
maybe one third, something like that. We're going to go ahead and start this cut. There's our first cut. We'll go ahead and release our tension again with the knob in the back. Release the blade. Find our next entry hole. And we'll cut the next cut out. Again, Entry level saws are all about the experience you're going to get from the saw. It's not going to be as good of an experience as you will uh, with a mid-level to a high-end saw, but does it get the job done? Yes, it will. And I'll prove that here with this cut. Our second cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on this project a little bit. When I get closer to the end, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll finish it up. Just about to finish up the final cut on this little Christmas ornament that we've been working on here. And uh, I would give this saw pretty good marks. Uh, does it have deficiencies? Yes, it does. Uh, do those deficiencies keep you from using the saw? Absolutely not. Every uh, problem that I saw with the saw, uh, I was able to overcome with just a little bit of uh, technique and uh, a little practice with the blade change and, and it was pretty good. Um, I will say this, there's a couple things I would do to this saw right off the bat. Uh, one, I would uh, add a foot switch to it, which we talked about. The other is I would maybe consider putting a, a second table on top of this table. The table's a little rough and it's, it actually bothered my hands a little bit to cut on it. Uh, not that bad, but it's a little rough so I might put an auxiliary table on it. Uh, and if I did the auxiliary table, I would also put a zero uh, clearance for the blade. Just in other words, a much smaller hole. Um, I would also bolt this saw down to a stand. Um, that would uh, be a little more handy and I would add some type of work like to it. And uh, with uh, those additions, I think you would have a pretty nice saw for well under $150. And um, you can get some jobs done with this saw. Now, would I want to use this saw for production cutting? No, that's not what it's intended for. It's an entry level saw and you need to go into that with the expectations of that's what you're buying. Uh, can you make uh, very nice gifts for family and friends? Absolutely. I would say this saw would cut any pattern on my website, um, maybe with a couple of exceptions. Uh, I don't think I would push this saw to too thick of wood. I believe I would keep it to uh, one inch or less, probably even three quarters inch, uh, but you can do a whole lot of projects in that. I'm not sure I would use it to do uh, a whole lot of stack cutting. Like in Christmas ornaments, usually I'll cut four at a time. I might cut that down to two at a time on this saw. Um, I would definitely buy better blades than come with it. Of course, the blades that come with it are going to wear out pretty quick anyway, so that's not going to matter. In this video tonight, uh, trying to answer the original question of the video, and that is, can you get started into the scroll sawing hobby with an entry level saw? And I'm going to answer that yes, I believe you can. And I know I'm going to take some heat from that, uh, from some of the more advanced scrollers, uh, because most of them will tell you that you get what you pay for in a tool. And that's true, this saw has some deficiencies, uh, but I was able to make some pretty nice projects. I got a little nameplate, I got a keychain, I got a Christmas ornament, and I basically didn't have any trouble with any of these projects. Now, these aren't advanced projects. And, uh, you know, as you get into more advanced projects, you may want to consider moving up into an entry-level saw. But don't let that hold you back from getting you started. Uh, jump in there, get yourself a saw, play with it, and then if you find you really love the hobby, by all means, move on up into a higher-level saw. Okay, I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being with me here at the Scroll Saw Workshop. And, again, keep your eye on my blog, and we'll see if we can uh, give this saw away to somebody here in the next few weeks.